uh, he, he just told me about this Hollywood Mafia thing, and I started logging on, and um, Kenny had logged on, and uh, when I sent him a letter, he's like, is this really Junior? I said, yes, this is Junior. So he had told him, like, some kind of an awkward question, like, out of left field, that only I would know uh, the answer to. Um, I don't recall what the question was, but I answered it. Uh, I think it had something to do with what kind of a car my father had back in, I don't know, early 90s or something like that. <laughs> and I answered him. And then and I wrote at the end, and this is Junior. So we just started talking, and, you know, he explained to me about the whole break, his, uh, break shot thing, and um, he introduced me to this Matthew Randazzo. And they're very interested in doing a book um, on, you know, my whole case was called Operation Payback. Um, the first time I put on the recorder, when I got in the car, I was talking to into the recorder saying, guys, we got to name this something. we got to dub this something. So I said, you know what? Because we're going to fuck them all. Let's just call it Operation Payback. And, you know, when I met up with Tommy and Gary, uh, the agent and the uh, detective, they said, that's great. We'll call it Operation Payback. So, uh, so Ken introduced me to this Matthew Randazzo. And Matt, um, this guy does wonders. You know, he's unbelievable. Uh, I don't know if you had a chance to read any of uh, Great Shot yet, but the book is phenomenal. And I think he, he did such a wonderful job um, that I think I'm going to use him also to do my book. And we're going to hopefully look into maybe a movie deal. And, uh, I mean, people are coming out of the woodwork now. Um, all of a sudden, Luke, you know, wanting to talk to me, uh, you know, like the New York Daily News uh, called me up and asked me uh, to do a piece, you know, what do I think about La Cosa Nostra then, you know, how it was then, how it is now, and where do I think it's going. So oh, that should be coming out in the New York Daily News probably, and I believe tomorrow or Tuesday it'll be out. Um, and then at the bottom of the, at the end of the article, it's going to say, um, coming soon, uh, the memoir of Operation Payback, Matthew Andazzo, and Bogotolo Jr., 2010. So, so, well, I'm excited, you know, you know, I just, uh, I'm excited to get that story out there, Luke. I mean, it's, it's going to be a very nice story to tell, and it's something that I, uh, Hope my grandchildren will be able to read them day and be proud of, you know, meaning me, that I, I did the, the right thing instead of the wrong thing, so to speak, if you know what I mean. How, how easy or how difficult was it to go straight? Um, it, well, I had a tough, tough, tough time. I'm not going to lie to you, Luke. It was, it was hard. I mean, you know, did you ever see the movie My Blue Heaven? No. Listen. You know, sir. Oh, anyway, it's Steve Martin, and it's uh, plays a part of a gangster. And they send him into the witness protection program, and he just doesn't fit in. And he's still scheming and scamming, and you know. Anyway, um, it's extremely hard because you know they move you. First of all, I got moved around so much. Um, somebody saw me here that knew me from Brooklyn. Somebody saw me there that knew me from Brooklyn. So they moved me about three or four times. Um, but, um, the, you know, you, there's an old saying, you know, you can take the boy out of Brooklyn, but you can't take the Brooklyn out of the boy. Yeah. So no, so no matter where I go, Luke, I mean, I'm, I always run into someone that'll say, hey, that's, that's an, what are you, where are you from? It's a Brooklyn accent. What part of Brooklyn are you from? I am not afraid. I tell them. I'm from Flatbush, Flatlands Avenue. Um, there's a few, you know, where I live, there's a few guys out here that I know of. Um, but they lay low. I think they're, they're afraid to run into me, you know, that are in the program. Um, but today, with the way everybody flips, you know, one day we might start our own fucking fool. Who knows, you know? We sell them Bibles. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we sell them Bibles with blank pages inside, you know? But no, I, but no, all kidding aside, I, um, it was very hard. But it, it's more rewarding, to be perfectly honest with you. My my son is uh, an honor student. He's on the Dean's List, National Honor Society, plays saxophone, uh, plays baseball. Um, my daughter, um, 
she's, she can play the piano. She's another one who's uh, on the honor roll. Um, and where I live, um, schooling is, is, is very good. And my children are just, um, I can't, I couldn't see them thriving in Brooklyn, let's put it that way. I would never have survived, you know, even if I would have stuck around. Even, let's, let's just say, look, let's just say it was a ball as fuck and I stuck around. You know, I like, killed my father, fuck it, I don't care, I'll stick around. Even if I did. You know, it's not a place for my son, my daughter. You know, I have a new baby now. I have a 10 month old that I haven't told anybody about, but you know, and Kenny knows, our baby boy. So I have two boys, one girl. And, um, that's my life, Luke. They're my life. So. So, so what were the toughest parts about going straight? What was the most difficult part of it? Um, scheming. Always trying to, you know, come up with a scheme, you know, like if you sit in the car one day if my wife went into a store and, you know, the Brinks truck pulls up, you know, and your mind starts going, you know, you're looking at the driver, uh, how many guys are in the back, how many guys do I need, you know what I mean? That, stuff like that, but then it goes away. You know, then I say to myself, hey, what are you doing? You know, what do you think about that stuff for? That, that's not your life anymore. And now I live my life, um... Kind of like the way we were raised, Luke. I'm sure you were told the same thing as a young kid. Um, don't do anything to someone that you wouldn't want done to you. So, thinking along those lines, and another thing that, that I preach to my son is, if you do everything with a, clear, a clean mind and a clean heart, then the world will be yours. So, I, that was something that I would have to tell myself every single day um, until I just got... Think of it. I would wake up saying it. I'd go to bed saying it. Um, I would have it on a recorder and just put it on before I went to bed and keep listening to it, saying, you know, um, you are a human being. You are you are a good person. Um, your life now is to completely go forward. The past is the past. And, you know, I had a lot of problems. I had I went to a lot of doctors, like a lot of head doctors, and I wasn't able to talk to them. I wasn't able to tell them why I was so distraught and fucked up and, you know, it, it just, it was a mess. It was, a, it was just, it was very hard to, um, watching, if, if I went to Best Buy and I see Best Buy truck pull up and the guy jumps out, he goes, goes to get himself a, bit, a soda and he leaves the truck running. Can you leave a loaded truck from Best Buy running so you can go running and get a soda? I mean, if that was Brooklyn, forget about it. By the time he came out, well, I think that the parking lot probably would have been empty, let alone just the truck missing. So, um, it was it was very, very hard. Um, but the minute that I look at my kids is when it all goes away. It all goes away. It's all those all those bad things and, and stuff like that, it goes away. You know, and I look at them and they make me smile and... Now, is it true, did you get convicted of extortion? Um, it's true because they forced me to, they, they forced me to take a plea. Um, they told me that what happened was the stockbroker was a friend of mine. He wound up opening up a margin account um, without my permission. I was getting some stocks from a stockbroker, okay? I was calling them into him. I would tell him when to buy at what price, tell him to hold it for so long, and then I would call him and tell him when to sell. So we had, you know, this was legitimate at the time. We had about 50 grand that we put in that my wife's grandmother had from a sudden fall accident. I said, just, just invest it into some, some solid stuff and just let her collect something maybe every other month if she has it. So, you know, after about three or four months, we got this 50 grand up to about a quarter of a million. So he sees this, and he wanted to do something right by me. This, this is what he told me. He said, you know, I saw how you know, good you were picking the stocks, and we were getting off such a good run. He said, I took a margin account out. I said, for how much? He says, for, I think it was for 50000 So now he sold out all the stocks, but now, now I owed 50000 Besides, he lost the fifty. Now I owed fifty. So I'm like, what the fuck did you do? He's like, Bill, I'm so sorry, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, listen, you got to pay this money back. I told you, this is legitimate money. I said, you, I said, you gave me your words. 
I told you. 